Ah, yes. Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends. It's a podcast exclusively about flying into unknown territory of awful television, Pilots of the Past. My name is Jason, but in my Mahjong group, I'm known exclusively as the Black Baker, and across from me is my hot loaf. Hey, kids, it's Captain Philip Rustisher. Good evening, sir. How are you? And a great evening to you. I am fine. Am I like a nice, warm loaf of bread? I like you to think, cut yeah. it open for the Ooh, first time. A little Slab, st- steam comes steam out. Steam comes out. You lather oh, some yeah. of that cinnamon butter on there mm. from Texas Roadhouse. And you just gobble it up. Ooh, and then you just eat so much of it, then your steak comes and you're full. And you feel sick, and then you got to go to the bathroom, and you sit on the toilet, but nothing happens. Yeah. And the steam comes out. <laughs> your butt makes noises, but nothing comes out. It's like the door's open, but nothing's falling no, out. No one's coming in. <laughs> or out. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like, I would say. Yeah, thanks. I'm hey. glad you're still my friend. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, i um, excited to uh, have a, a flight with you today to go into the air and to discuss a, a television show that existed and we saw. Yeah, and uh, we're wearing shorts now. We, 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 we wear short shorts. <laughs> if you dare wear short shorts. No, but it's summertime <laughs> and we don't have, uh, we, 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 of course we have pilot hats. All right, we wear of pilot- course we have pilot hats. Right, but, of course we do. But we don't always, you know. I, I have my black socks up, you know, mm-hmm. to about the middle of my, middle of my shins, and sure. I, I got some sneakers on. But yeah. I, I'm wearing shorts, man, because it's summertime. You gotta be prepared for that weather. You get first of all, stay hydrated, right? Stay hydrated, please. Second of all, you gotta stay cool. Yeah, and uh, I in the summertime, uh, before every flight. Uh, I put some sunscreen on your forehead and your nose mm-hmm. and underneath your eyes, and you do the same for me because we're all we're just looking, we're we're basically staring into the sun, just like you two once said, right? Did they? I don't know. Staring at the sun. Oh, don't get that reference. Mm. I don't like you two. I don't like you two either. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, that's just some of the prep that we do during the summertime for each flight, and you know, and I'm showing off my legs because I, you know, if you got them, flaunt them. Uh, that's exactly how I feel about legs, too. Um, at the top of the show here, I wanted to mention something that was super odd that I saw the other day. Oh, what what what, what was it? Our next hamster? Because I probably saw it, too. Oh, I did forward you that link, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, here's something, oh, here's something, some, here's oh, something different, then. No, that was what I was going to say, is the link. But I did send it to you. I forgot. Um, I actually like, copied all. Oh. I got a lot of... Um, Mad grandmas? I'm, I'm blocked now by a good majority of the people I know. Anyway, so you got that link. But something else that I found, um, I was on my way to the pilot's lounge, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going down the uh, the corridor, and I pass um, DSJ's uh, janitor's closet where he has his you know his Ferrari calendar and all his shits in sure. there. Sure, whatever the his fuck mop and his bucket, and yeah, I mean, he's got some duct like a pink duct tape or something. Yeah, he's got yeah he's got like a, a whole box full of pink duct tape. <laughs> I think he must have got a good deal on Amazon or something, but. Because for me, gray duct tape. All right? That's what I like. I'm a white duct taper. You're a white duct tape. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? But pink is a little, I don't know. Whatever. It's a little bright. So it's, I'm it's like It's like you obviously put duct tape on this. Mm-hmm. Like with white or gray. Let's draw attention to right. the thing that's wrong. Right. Come on. Get with it. So I'm walking by the uh, the janitor's closet, and it's like cracked open, right? And usually it should be closed because um, whatever he's got going on in there, I don't want to see it. Right. Yeah. Okay? I mean, Yes. We keep the pilot's lounge spotless. Fook me's been well, doing a great job cleaning it, right? Right. I don't want to see any mess. And that's just I know it's a total disaster in there. So I'm walking by. The door's cracked open. There's a light. So I'm like, all right, I will hold my breath. Maybe he fell and hit his head or something. I, I wasn't even concerned about that, oh, honestly. Okay. I just I was like, what well, I'm just gonna hold my breath because who knows what kind of stench is coming oh, out of God. there. I'll oh. reach my hand inside around the corner, I'll feel for the switch, turn the light off because Who's paying for that light? We are, mm-hmm. our Patreon fans. And then I close the door. That's what I wanted to do. So I do that, and then I, uh, I put my hand in the door, and then I hit a th- I hit something. And I'm like, well, what is this? And it's mushy. like a, It's like a person. What? And like- so I look in there, and, uh, and I'm like, uh-oh, excuse me. And um, a fook me was in there? Yeah. But She's like- probably putting the mop away and like dustpan and stuff. That's, that's like for a split second, that's what I thought was happening. But like, it was like it was Fook me, but it wasn't Fook me. What? Like we always talked about this girl that 
you know, DSJ met at hedonism and brought back as his wife. It's right. Like, it's kind of a weird situation. Yeah, she's got some legs, though, man. Oh, they go on for days. And she yeah. doesn't speak very good English. She doesn't, hardly any at all. I, t- I, I accidentally touched this woman. I think it was on her back. <laughs> and uh, it's like, you remember Anne who came on the show? She, uh... Um, and is the uh, the baby mom of DSJ? Yeah, DSJ Jr.'s m- mom. She did uh, "Hey uh, Hey Neighbor" with us. Yeah, I think that Fook Me and Anne are the same person. I've never seen them in the same place at the same time. It's kind of like Elvis and um, John Lennon. Yeah, yeah. No one ever saw those two together. <laughs> so I was going to see Elvis and Richard Nixon, but. <laughs> There was a whole movie about them meeting. <laughs> you should have said that. <laughs> that would have been a better joke, wouldn't it? I'll write that down. But like, make better jokes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not even, not even reference that again. Just make better <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Maybe go ahead and drink. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. This one is hey, late. Hey, listeners. Two weeks in a row, baby. No alcohol for me. Hashtag drunk pilot. But uh, it was very concerning because obviously, you know, we, we've had our ups and downs with Down syndrome. Well, what made you? I mean, how can I be the same person? You ever see Mission Impossible? Uh, does like, that have Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah. I never saw it. Um, he uh, he would do this thing where he could do like a face scanner, so he could like look like someone else, so he could uh, infiltrate okay. high security areas. Do you think Anne is infiltrating our secure, our getting into our pilot's lounge? I do think that. What do you think? Or what do you think she's doing it for? I don't know if this is just a way to get back but, into DSJ's life or spend more time with her child, DSJJR. I don't know the answer to these things. Well, we have that. Um, I got um, over at my house. Uh, remember, we bought those uh, retinal scanners. Sure. Yeah. Remember we were, we were going to have DSJ install them. Yeah. Maybe we should. Maybe we should get those out. But like, I I saw look, what I saw was basically. Did you see red? I saw red. Yeah, I was so angry. I saw red, and then I, uh, and then once I was done being mad, and it was only a matter again of a split second. It was like a banana almost. Like you had a base, which are the legs of the person, and it kind of split off into two different people. Almost like Anne was wearing some sort of Fook Me costume. That's what it looked like. That's crazy. Did you say anything to her? I was so befuddled after seeing red. I, uh, I said, "Oh, excuse me," and I, I take a step back. And I just kind of froze, and then she closed the door on me. And then I just I was I stood there for about thirty five minutes, and still. And then I just walked away. Did you hear anything? No. But I saw something, so now so, I thought I'd say something. Yeah, I definitely could. Yeah, if you saw something, say something. What do we? I mean, DSJ. He's married to what he believes is this Chinaman woman. He's in with, love with. Yeah, with some great legs. As odd as it's been, I'm only focus she, on those legs. You really love those legs. <laughs> Which is oh. ironic because I'm more of a boob and butt guy. Boob and butt? You get a little greedy there, right? With the bumps. <laughs> so far, she's been fine. It's been odd. it's an odd thing, but it's, everything's been on the level seemingly so far. Right? It's they're 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 split and uh, you know taking care of you know DSJJR. It's yeah. going to be pretty equal. Right, right. The kid seems to be growing up there fine. Wasn't Again, any... he's got a tremendous amount of core strength. I don't know where that factors in, but there was no. There's not been any like. Uh, uh, House calls for like domestic violence or anything no, like that. No, nothing like that. That's weird. And you're right, though. I just just like Elvis and Nixon and John Lennon, I've never seen Anne and Fook Me in the same place before. So I'm thinking that this might. I don't know. I might try to contact Anne. And oh, definitely. Br- bring her back on 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 the plane here and have yeah, a conversation. With I think her. so. I think that's a great idea because, I mean, it to me it would seem so difficult to to dress yourself up as another person. Uh, every single time. Yeah. So I mean, if we just get to the bottom of it, you know, if she, if just if we want to just hire Ann, we'll just hire Ann. But I'm now I'm worried about DSJ and another marriage because his first wife got killed on the airplane. Yeah. I don't remember her name. It was like Piper Parabo or something. Yeah. And, and she died on a, uh, with, a plane with Harrison, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford and her and, and DSJ's mom. She uh, thankfully she the well not I mean. She was the only one who passed away. Sure, thank uh, thank God. Uh, DSJ's mom was in a coma, but we flew down and got her and brought her back and mm-hmm. helped nurse her to back to hell. Yep. She, I mean, she, she does she have a metal spine now? Sure, but she, she she's getting around okay. Oh yeah, she's practically a robot. She's got perfect perfect posture now. How are her legs? 
Uh, they kind of got those varicose veins. Yeah, like yeah. big ones, right? Yeah, kind of yeah. they stick out like a crossword puzzle. Yeah. Uh, I think we got some investigating to do. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm gonna try to get Anne back on the on the plane here, have a conversation with her, and then we'll see. We'll kind of suss out what we need to do next. Suss out. Yeah, that's like. Um, What's that mean? Suss out. Like a like figure th- figure things out. Why do you say figure things out? Why do you always gotta act like you always use ten dollar words? Isn't is that not is that does that dampen the show? You think using ten dollar words? Yeah, it dampens me because I can't come. You know, if you you know if you said like fish it out or figure it out, I would have been like I would have had some cool line to come back on. I don't know. But he's like the Sussex. limits of your uh, your Sussex. vocabulary. I, I don't know where the line. You've is. known me for this long, and you don't know that I don't know any big words. <laughs> So just just like words with uh, uh well sus is only one syllable so that's kind of a hard thing to be like wh- where's the limit you know what I mean like if, I'm not I'm not gonna use three syllable words on you all right I know better than that but right. what what's the limit the sky that's fair that's fair <laughs> do you have any fan feedback well yeah I we do we do have some fan feedback um I got really um suss it out for me will you. <sighs> I, I, I yeah, last week I told you some fan feedback like a, there was a Twitter conversation between Kemo Slice us and um, uh, Matt. Yeah, that was great. I, uh, I always love it when uh, but frequent that, flyers interact like but that. But then I didn't finish the conversation. Boo! <laughs> so, um, Kemo Slice says, um, uh, Matt, a quick punch up from your episode of Couch Pilots when you were talking about landing the plane at your house. You asked about the brakes on the plane, and I thought of Samuel Jackson's reference would really have taken this episode to a Brian Hackett. Snakes on a plane. I didn't see it. That being said, solid episode, boys. Loved the added ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> that was your entire contribution to the program, right? I think, right? right? Uh, <laughs> Merc bang aspect that we got. Every once in a while from uh, Captain Rest Assure. I was hungry. I don't know what you guys want me to do. Um, I mean, just probably like eat before or after, I think, is, is as simple as that, right? Could be. Could be. <laughs> could be. Um, let's see. Snakes on a Plane. The, the movie title was so ridiculous that Samuel L. Jackson said, if you change the name of the film, I will drop out of the film. Really? Yeah, that was his kind of stipulation. Uh, and then Matt responded, uh, we were flirting with a Brian Hackett question mark, son of a... All we needed was remember that Mr. Glass once rode on a snake-infested plane. That was from Matt. Yep. Uh, and this was uh, Lori, Lori Garcia's response to uh, Dee Dee putting her money where her mouth is. Mm, here we go. Um, I said, Lori Garcia, you've been called out. Can't wait for CouchCon 2018. And Lori says, it's on like Donkey Kong, which is a, a, a video game reference. I love Donkey Kong references. Uh, and finally... Never played the game. Uh, finally, uh, Adam Z, at, Adam, at that underscore Adams. What does, that, what does Z stand for? Know. Is it Zoo? Huh? Z Cavarici. Adam Z Cavarici. Mm-hmm. Got it. Uh, at Couch Pilots Pod, after being on a flight... With a crying loud ass baby, no baby should ever be allowed to fly. Hashtag no babies. You say no baby too. <laughs> I say no baby. Uh, my response was agreed, but uh, at Kimbo Slice's baby is an exception to the rule because it was because it was. Pfft, and I wrote this and I still can't read it. Agreed, but Kimbo Slice's baby is exempt because the rule was made after consumption. Conception. Yeah. And finally, from episodes, uh, season 13, episode 9, Archie, Lori Garcia says, Oh my God, the movie quote is beautiful. Great episode. Keep up the good work. You wanted it. You got it. That's all people, people do not understand that it takes very, very little effort for to get us to do something. That's right. All she did was say, Hey, losers, I want you guys to do um, something from. Uh, the poor movie. Look, you can call us losers, and we'll still do it. We don't appreciate being called that, but we'll still do it. Hey, I'm a loser, baby. Hey, so why don't you kiss me? Ooh, I like that better. I was want to die, but that's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. 
I'd always heard your entire life flashes in front of your eyes the second before you die. First of all, that one second isn't a second at all. It stretches on forever, like an ocean of time. For me, it was lying on my back at Boy Scout camp, watching the falling stars, and yellow leaves from the maple leaves that lined our street. Or my grandmother's hands, the way her skin seemed like paper. And the first time I saw my cousin Tony's brand new firebird. And Janie. And Janie. And Carolyn. I guess I can be pretty pissed off about what happened to me, but it's hard to stay mad when there's so much beauty in the world. Sometimes I feel like I'm seeing it all at once, and it's too much. My heart fills up like a balloon that's about to burst. And then I remember to relax and stop trying to hold on to it. And then it flows through me like rain. And I can't feel anything but gratitude for every single moment of my stupid little life. You have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm sure. But don't worry. Rocky IV. Rocky IV. That was what the Russians said to him right before they started fighting. I must break you. And then he said, I must break you, and then all of right, that. Right, right. Yeah. Today we discussed the pilot episode of Welcome to Eltingville from the year of our Lord, 2000 plus only two grat yar. I'm sorry, sorry. Great year. 2002. It's like if you use the same frontwards and backwards. What's that called? An aneurysm? It's called an aneurysm. Mm-hmm. That's right. 2002 rolls around. Guess what? Bing, bing, bing. I'm 21. Time to go to the bar. 21. 21. That would make me 27. Yeah, divisible by three and nine. Fantastic. Man. Um. 27. God, it was so long ago. I think I was married to Carrie. Maybe not. Maybe I was dating Carrie. This is the second one. Yeah, I think it was dating her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nothing Nothing fun to talk about there. You hate You hate the second one, right? Yeah. The first one you hate? Uh, yeah, it was just, I, don't have, I don't deal with her anymore. So Is she, is she single? Uh, no. Okay. She's that, not. Ugh. She's not. Is she gross looking? Oh, yeah. Like, like She's gross looking then. Describe her. Uh, it's like gross. Pale. Is she, is she just like gross? <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Pale and gross. Pale, gross. Puffy. Puffy. Where? What regions? Like all regions. <laughs> Even her toes. Yeah. Oh, puffy toes. <laughs> puffy toes. Puffy toes. <laughs> Why am I licking you? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Woo! If I ever needed another reason to hate friends, um, and I mean my friends, I just hate all my friends. And uh, we hate you too. <laughs> I have a feeling you're not lying. Um, I, I want to say 2002, I remember you, but I can't remember it completely because it was a long time ago. Yeah, it was like 16 years ago. So we have to talk about stuff oh, wait, that happened 16, that year. Yeah, 16. yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we got to talk about stuff that happened at the time so we can properly digest this pilot. But as we know, at the time of this recording anyway, time travel for our physical selves doesn't exist. Not so possible. We, ha- we have to go back in time. In, in our, our minds, minds to remember that year appropriately. We gotta be fair. Yeah. You gotta be fair. Yeah. You hey, like, do you wanna be unfair? No, no I don't. I don't wanna be unfair. I don't, don't want to live in a world that's unfair. God, I can't so look at this pilot from the eyes of 2018. Right. I agree. Because so, back in 2008, 2002, we did there was a lot of things we didn't have, right? Mm, preach it. Right. We didn't have horticulture. Right, that's a that is probably you mentioned a lot of shit. That is the biggest one. Right, Horti- we did not have horticulture back then. Right, uh, we didn't have uh, band aids, of course. Duh, that's obvious. You know what? I might be wrong when I say this. I don't remember milk of magnesia. Oh, that's another one. And Macaulay Culkin, milk of Macaulay. We didn't have that either, right? Milk of Macaulay, Macaulay, Macaulay. Era, 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 Coley. Ah, era, ooh, ah, era, ooh, ah, era, poo, poo, caca. June 4th, 2002, Canadian singer Avril Lavigne mm. releases debut album Let Go, contains successful singles such as Complicated. Sing it. No, I was going to do the next one. And Skater Boy. He was a skater boy. He said, see you later, boy. God, she was hot. She was, was she oh, hot? God, I would have. I would have took her to next year. All right, don't get me wrong. I would. Uh, Why you got to make things so complicated? Oh, Acting like you gets me frustrated. But then. And even when she got older, she was still hot until the day she made the worst decision of her life. When she committed suicide, R.I.P. Avril No. She committed career suicide by marrying the lead singer of Nickelback. Mm. Chad Kruger. Mm-hmm. Uh, did they get divorced? I hope so. 
I hope I hope for their unhappiness. Um, she always wore like like in the beginning she wore a tie with like a like a wife beater or something. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, she was a, yeah. she she was someone that was like, oh, this person is just all image. Like she was pr- she was produced. Yeah, she was totally produced. Yeah. Um, that I think that was the first time I was consciously aware of of like an individual being so produced that it was just like obvious. You know what I mean? Like she she definitely influenced uh style. Yes. To a degree, but like I was uh, so turned off by the like listen to your songs. They're not punk songs. You're not a punk singer. You're singing pop songs and looking like a punk. I don't care for that. Yeah. What are you looking at? This picture's over. Her, her teeth didn't never got any better. She was from Canada. Well, they have free health care though. That's she always like, wore all that. Lies the problem. She always wore that that mascara, like that dark mascara. I, uh, I, I, you know what? To be honest with you, uh, oh, by the age fifteen, that she had appeared on stage with Shania Twain. By sixteen, she had signed a two album recording contract with Arista Records worth more than two million dollars. Uh, she is no longer married to Chad Kroger, and. She is also no longer. Wasn't she married to a Sum Fifty One guy, Derek? Derek Whittle. I think he was from Sum Fifty One. Oh something. yeah, that that, that, that he, dude. He's right the there. weird looking blonde kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's that kid's got the Michael J. Fox disease where he'll like forever look like a child. Yeah. What's his name? Derek Weeby. Weebly. W- Wimbley. Yeah. Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Yeah. They were married for four years, and then she was only married to Chad Kroger for two years. June 8th, teen rock star Taylor Hansen, who was 19 at the time. He weds uh, Natalie Bryant, 18, at Callaway Gardens in Pine Mountain, Georgia. These boys are religious boys. Really? Yeah. And they, they married young, and they had a bunch of kids, all of them. Because they, they couldn't have sex till they got married, so the first... Yeah, very religious young boys. You know, I remember when the when that first came out. I have two quick stories. One is I, I was watching MTV when they still played music videos, and they played the Mbop video. And this is kind of uh, alternative music was dying. Boy bands were starting, um, and like Corn was around. Corn was a weird mix and all this fucking shit. And then you and then I saw this video for Mbop. It is a bunch is three little girls standing in front of a big gr- green screen. I was like. MTV, okay, I don't really watch anymore, but you got a couple tricks up your sleeve. This is funny. You're doing something very funny right now. This is a silly thing. It wasn't silly at all. This is a very serious... Right. Like, they were... This is an actual product that they were trying to sell me. I thought it was like a fucking joke. I, uh... When I was a manager at the uh, movie theater, uh, there was a young lady who had, was a senior in high school, uh, and, and, and I was also working with her after she graduated, but she was a huge Hanson fan. She had been she, like she had rocks from their driveway. She was like she would go to eight or nine concerts a year all over the country to watch these guys. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, I guess you have to have something. And she was cute too. I was like, why are you so stupid? Well, oh, I think that therein lies the answer, right? Um, so, and then my friend was like, right when they first came on the scene, it was like, uh, is like you see that Hanson, right? I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Those, those, it's, like, it's a silly pop song. It's like yeah, yeah that that mill, that chick in the mill, she's hot. <laughs> Like what's that now? It's like the singer, like the main singer. Like you got the the tall. I think it's a guy. He played the drums. Oh, no, that he played the guitar. Yeah, and then the, the little itty bitty. The kid little played. kid played the drums, right? But that girl in the middle, the singer, <laughs> she's hot. I was like Eddie. That's a boy. <laughs> Eddie. Eddie, are you? Eddie, are you masturbating to a boy? <laughs> are you hot? Are you on crack? <laughs> <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Um, Eddie may have jacked off to Taylor Hansen. I can't say that I blame him. He was the same guy who said John Bonet was hot. Um, but um, yeah, that's a young age. Well, could you imagine being a pop star and like every single pussy in the world just being hand delivered to your doorstep and, and you saying, "I will just get married and, and forfeit all of that"? Right. Yeah. It takes yeah. a strong constitution. Yeah. Yep. Uh, June twenty ninth, Vi- U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney. Serves as acting president for two and a half hours while President George W. Bush undergoes a colonoscopy colonoscopy procedure. Many are unaware of the amendment that states a man cannot be president while having something inserted to into his or her anus. I never knew that 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 he that he had a colonoscopy. 
I guess I never realized that he like why why would you need why why would yeah. you need him to be president because he was under anesthesia why Maybe. yeah he was under anesthesia so he couldn't make decisions right for a okay so right. so for, some tremendous so if the, event if, happened if the Russians would have like we are now going to bomb because he's getting up his camera up his butt Dick Cheney's like ah, I'm a president I'll make a decision I'll shoot missiles back at you actually I'll just shoot my shotgun and blow your faces off I wonder how many times during history that and uh, human history in the United States has happened. To where another president has taken that, over. That we don't know, that we didn't even like hear about or know mm-hmm. about. Because they, they probably didn't make a big deal out of it, right? It was just like all nonchalant. Like, hey guys, we're just... This is fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. He's got to have some teeth pulled. Just, you know, Cheney, just take over. I guess, you know, uh, I don't know the answer to these questions. Uh, I do know that I was 21. You were 27. And I also know there are reasons that we chose to watch Welcome to Eltingville. Yeah, there's four pillars. We're in season 14. This is uh, a special season. Special season. This is our cartoon extravaganza season. Um, so there's four pillars. Obviously, the first pillar is it had to be a cartoon. It's plain and simple. Yeah. Uh, if you're saying, oh, let's w- watch this live anima- this live television, you know. No, it's got to be animation, right? This is an animation season. Uh, number two... There only had to be one made, no more, no less. Mm-hmm. Whether it aired or not is irrelevant. Number th- three is we had to find it on the interwebs, and number four, got to be free, baby. Yeah, it's got because it, free it has because has... free has four letters, and that's why I made it number four. One, four two, letters. three, four, free. I suppose you're right. Yeah. <laughs> built in the back of his back. Holy herbs. crow! Some people say um, you've given me the pillars. Now, where can I see this show for myself? Well, I say you can find the entire episode of Welcome to Eltingville by subscribing to Couch Pilots or an Apple podcast or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classic label links in our show notes. <laughs> or go to YouTube, and you know what to do, Tube. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. There's DSJ. Oh, my God. He's... He looks so happy. He looks happy, right? Yeah, when he's when he's waving those golden cones, he never looks happier. That's like his purpose. Like he found his purpose. And I think, you know, having that child and having Fook me in his life makes him so much happier. But I don't I don't know what's real anymore. Right. right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and he he's wearing his shorts too. He wears real short shorts. Yeah, I was like, hey buddy, you know. Yeah, maybe cool. wear maybe wear some cargo shorts. It's fine. Yeah, wear some bicycle shorts under that or something, you know, keep yeah. everything in check. <laughs> yeah. He's got. I don't want to be huge too crass, dick. but he's, he's got a huge dick. It does. And it's, it's always peeking out. Yeah, it's just taking a little look. Like, get, like it's like I just want to dip out for some air. <laughs> That's that how it does it? Cock, cock breathes in. Cock breathe out. <laughs> cock breathe in. Summary of the pilot: The misadventures of four boys who are big fans of comic books, toys, trading cards, and science fiction. That's. That's your summary. Yeah. Um, well, compared to last week's summary, this one is pretty good. I like it. I like it. it, cut, it. You tell me, it cuts the mustard. It cuts right to the chase. This next part of the show um, is is one that I guess I guess I would say it's a little scary. There there are things in this world that cause disruptions, cause. Um, Fault lines, if you will, in relationships, friendships, um, co-pilot ships, co-pilot. Absolutely, um, this is one of those things. Mm. It's a section of the show. It's of, been one of the hardest things for us. Mm-hmm. It, 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 you know, we, last episode we talked about how we never get in fights. I would say that this section of the show, while necessary, has been the thing that has come closest to getting us into a fight. Yeah, it's called interesting facts, and that's strictly because we had to name the segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. What Jason has done is he's taken this pilot and he's looked up on the, the interwebs and, and tried to find some tidbit facts and some information that you may not know about. Um, and he's going to tell you about them. And whether or not they're, you think they're interesting is pretty irrelevant. Conrad rule. The Conrad rule is in effect. Don't talk to anybody about these. Mm-hmm. You know, If you have a four-legged friend, yes, discuss. But you don't, can talk, you don't can talk at, to these about animals. Yeah. Don't look at your pregnant wife and say, hmm. Was that fact interesting? No. Why do we not want them to talk about it, Jason? Everyone should come into these blind and ready to receive this information and process it on their own and not be tainted by someone <laughs> else's experience. I don't, oh, the word taint. That's right. That's right. What's that? 
Um, welcome to Eltingville, based on Evan Dorkins, appropriately named, comic strip Eltingville. Only a pilot was ever created. Okay. Fact. It first premiered on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim on March 3rd, 2002, six months after 9-11. Fact. That's what happened. That's what's happened when bites are slapping. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. I'm doing a wild thing. Mm, tch, mm, mm, tch, mm, mm. Tone Loke, come wow, back. Wow. I wish Tone Loke would write and record a, a Couch Pilots theme song. I, there, I don't think there's anything stopping him from doing it. Wicked all week. Only flight mm, on my mm, mind. Mm. But when it comes to Mondays, I like to stick it in behind. Wow, wow. Um, the, the pilot's theme opening and closing themes. That doesn't make sense. Why would they write it like that? The pilot's opening and closing themes were written and performed by the Aquabats. Do you know the Aquabats? Nope. Mid to late 90s pop punk kind of underground band. Uh, they created the show Yo Gabba Gabba. You ever hear that fucking nope. shit? Uh uh-uh. All right. Fact. God damn. I've never seen your eyes so big before. You're scared of shit. <laughs> the pilot episode, Bring Me the Head of Boba Fett, adapts the Eisner Award winning story of the same name, which ran in the third issue of Instant Piano, which was a humorous comics anthology published by Dark Horse Comics that ran for four issues from 1994 to 1995. Fact. Fact. It was written by Evan Dorkin and Chuck Sheets and received a positive reception. It has been made available on DVD. <laughs> just the DVD is just that episode? Or is it like a, a, collab, a collection? Real quick, interesting facts over. I would imagine it's a collection. There was a, time, there was a weird time on AdultSwim.com where you could build your own DVD. That's, I think that's kind of cool. It basically said, hey, um, any of these shows that we have available... Just like probably like drag and paste them onto this thing, and you could build your own, and we will send you that DVD. That might, it may have been available as part of that. Oh, that's cool. I do not know. I think that is bitching. That is super bitching. That's cool. Uh, Twitter, Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Jason, 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 you got some Twitter responses? Question mark. I did. No question mark needed. We actually got some this time. We've been on a little bit of a hot streak lately. Um, I always say to the writers, directors, producers, creators, actors, who blah, ha, blah, 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 bleep, blue, blitcoin, greetings from Couch Pilots Podcast. We talk about TV shows that had only one episode. Next up for us is Welcome to Eltingville. We're excited to watch it or wondering if you had any fun or interesting info you'd want to share. Thanks. Hope to hear from you. Well, Tara Jane Sands uh, got back with us. She's a, a very notable uh, voice actress. And she says, wow, I haven't heard that title in a long time. I don't think I ever actually got to see it. I don't usually watch my own stuff. But that would be fun. Okay. We watched it. We watched it. You, hey, you know what, Tara? You can watch it. <laughs> Tara, go ahead. Come on, Tara. We'll send you the... We'll even send... Uh, you know what? We should send her the link on Twitter. We should. I said, well, we look forward to seeing it. What an incredible career in voice acting you've had. Thank you so much for getting back with us. Um, next up is Troy Metcalf. We had a handful of uh, responses. Troy, I think, was on the TV show The Middle that just ended. It's like seven or eight year run. Oh, yeah. Was... And um, he says, hey, thanks. This is a great project ahead of its time. At Nerdist fans and many others would be all over this if made today. Great cast at Tara Sands LA, who responded to us, and at Jason Harris, Corey Brill, who who, did, who responded to us next, and Lark Spies, Favorite moment, hashtag trivia off. And we'll get to that in a moment. Um, and I said, no doubt there's a lot of great talent here and experience that works. It's a shame that so many projects out there like this, one that uh, never made it. Thank you for getting back with us and continued success to you, sir. Uh, let's see if I can find a response here. Um, Jason Brill, though, had also had said something to us. Was it let's Corey see. Brill or Jason Brill? No, I'm sorry, Jason Harris. Oh. He says, wow, welcome to Eltingville. Blast from the past. So a lot, a lot of a lot of little notes like that. People recognizing sure. what we're saying. Like, they at least they take the time to acknowledge us. Totally. That's all I care about. Yeah, yeah. That we really we appreciate that very much. Um, 
yeah, you know, it's it's not every episode that we get to hear back from the people that are directly involved. And I and, think this is the, the the most in one episode of a number of people, anyway, right. for sure, yeah. absolutely. Um, here's I want to take time here to listen to a promo from one of my favorite shows. It's called that Karaoke Biggie. Hey, folks. Biggie here with some breaking news. My podcast, Karaoke Biggie, was just named the number one karaoke podcast of all time. Don't believe me? Well, you shouldn't. That category definitely does not exist. My co host, Kevmo, and I are in a league of our own when it comes to podcasts. So why don't you check out the world's best, well, probably only, karaoke podcast? Karaoke Biggie. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, or, or wherever else you get your podcast. Or you can check us out at karaokebiggie.com. Come on by every Tuesday and give us a listen. And remember, you can't be a star if you don't shine. Single-handedly the best theme song for a podcast ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you remember that night we were kind of like brainstorming what it should sound like? We kept, we came up with that kind of sound, but I think Kevin, he, like yeah. he found that specific Yeah, he was song. like, I know, we were discussing it, and he was like, I know the perfect song. We, we were it. talking about like kind of R&B sounding, um, like... Japanese, Japanese pop yeah. kind of stuff, and we're like, that's the sound, and, and then Kevin found it. He hit the nail on the head. Ow! Let's break down. Welcome to Eltingville. You got a, it's a cartoon, as we mentioned up top. It's um, you're in the woods. You got a bunch of young nerds, kind of dressed up in medieval garb. They're walking through these woods, and then lightning strikes the ground, and a skeleton named Lord Atrocity. He's got a princess named Tiffany. Yeah, right. Pr- princess Tiffany. He's got her, and uh, he. He uh, he's basically he's like I, I called him Skull Guy because I didn't know he had a name, mm-hmm. and he, he's wanting to. He's like, you guys can't get the princess for me. Yeah, you don't really know what the situation is here. You're just kind of thrown in it, and uh, so they they say, hey, there's a powerful guy. He's got a big staff with an eyeball in it, and they say, they look over to the side. And they say, hey, all of you minions, these little green guys, and, and yeah, little, they weren't yellow. They were they were not yellow. They the, were the original minions, right? The original. They're green. Look, they look like little green elf alien kind of things. Yeah. And uh, and they're they're talking very like Shakespearean, like they're trying to talk Shakespearean or, or like you know like like uh, Lancelot. Kind Up to of. this point, this is the reality I'm giving. This yeah. is the show, right. as far as I know. I knew it wasn't real. All these green guys, they get up and they say, hey, you guys, you're our minions. Go fight that guy. They're instantly killed. He like op- The skeleton opens up his robe, like a bunch of arrows come yeah, out like and 12, just ab- yeah. obliterates exactly. all of them. And, kills. and then um, th- then they start talking to each other. It's like, uh, this is a, my plus one axe will you know mess him up. And I was like, oh, these guys are dr- dungeons and dragon nerds. Yeah. You don't throw around terms like plus one this and that and not be a mega nerd. And uh, one of them even like uh, says like you're, you're nothing but a skeletal, skeletal ripoff, which I that's, that was one I got from He-Man. So uh, one of the dudes like goes up against him. He gets frozen. And then the rest of the guys get frozen instantly. And one of the guys gets his head knocked off. And I'm like, okay, something, something's weird. Something's up, right? <laughs> And it is revealed that this is just all a fantasy, and the boy, these there's four boys um, in a basement playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, there's Jerry, Pete, Josh, and Bill. Okay, I only got one or two of the names. So well, good it, job. it took me the whole episode to get all of them, but yeah. So uh, the, you know they're they're downstairs in the basement playing this D and D game, and the, you know the mom's upstairs. Uh, it's Bill's mom is upstairs cussing and telling them to all be quiet. You know, quiet down, you bunch of nerds. Mm-hmm. Which is what I would say too. Then you get the intro. It's kind of a uh, kind of it's it's a, it's a good intro, I think. There's a lot of kind of there's music and there's like a pow bam like you'd see in the 1960s yeah, like, uh, uh, Batman. Free, they're like freeze frame drawings of like the guys either doing something or uh, like a like a side headshot. They always look like they're on a mission. They're running somewhere. They're they're running to the local comic book shop. They're doing this and that. But I thought it was a kind of a fun little yeah. intro. Um, then the guy it goes back and these guys are having a meeting in this basement and they kind of each have their own nerdy venture that they are bringing to the meeting. Yeah, one guy was uh, contacting I, I like Sulu from Star yeah. Trek. He wanted to have his own show for him. He's like getting a petition signed or something. The the, the problem I have, <clears throat> what you're going to find, is I'm going to get stuck a lot on this uh, because there is a lot of nerd reference stuff. Yeah. And a lot of it I didn't really get. Well, one of the guys says, well, you know, we're all bringing things to the table. I've got Sexy Sirens number 10 on VHS. It's uh, That was uh, that was Josh. Josh is he's, the yeah. – he, he looks like a middle-aged man. Like he's got the ponytail and like the receding kind of hairline. Big fat guy. Big fat guy. And 
uh, but he's got this tape that he sent away for. So they're all super excited. Um, they want to watch. Sex Sirens are like it's got some nudity in it. Yeah, it's it's all their favorite like uh, female nerd TV actors, sci fi and, stuff. and fantasy and, stuff. Yeah, yeah, and supposedly they're all it's supposed to be all their. Their scenes were like nude scenes. Yeah, as soon as you lift up into the air a VHS tape, I know you're living in a time probably pre-internet to where pornography is just not rained upon you at all times. Right. Uh, so they, they they have a big argue, they have a big fight, and um, they they finally shove this tape into Bill's uh, VCR. It doesn't work, but they finally get it to work. It has that scrambly look all of a sudden, and then they find out that it's not. Sexy Sirens 10, somebody had copied Hair Bear Bunch. This is the first, maybe not the first exactly, but because I, I guess they did say Skeletor earlier, there are a million references to nerd things that are actual things. A lot of times these cartoons will build a universe where they have their own references to things that we don't know anything about. This takes from the from the world we live in extensively. Right. And the Hair Bear Bunch is one of those things. That was a real thing. Uh, anyway, the boys then fight again after yeah. seeing this, and then they get kicked out for being too loud. And the uh, the the big fat guy, he's uh, uh, he's shitty. Everyone hates him. Everyone's pissed at him. Yeah, but during the fight, he has one of his zits explode on them. It'll come back to that again. It was gross. Uh, it's, it's pretty like some cartoons can be set in in like a reality kind of thing. This is one of those moments where, like, there was so much like pus that came out that this is a heightened reality in which these boys sure. live in. So th- this is not like it, it's it's a little ridiculous, right? Uh, the mom kicks them out, uh, and, and so the, the, the uh, Jerry, Pete, and Bill are like, uh, we don't want to be friends with you anymore, Josh. Yeah, fuck them, fuck them. So uh, I can't remember which one. The kid who had the, the who's the head of the Elting Bill. Club. Bill. Okay, so he's at home and he's having like a sexy Star Trek dream, <laughs> and he's teleported to an alien planet. And I guess like the ground is made up of zits. It was kind of like what happened. So I think basically, throughout your day, your brain is taking in all this shit. You barely pay mind to any of it, and your brain sorts it out while you're sleeping. So I, I think he saw this fight that they had. That kid got covered in pus, and he's having a dream right. about it. Right. Well, what's funny is it was just like on Star Trek, and he was like Captain. They called him Captain Dicky. And, like, all of the people in the control room were all hot girls. Just sexy bros. And he, he's doing a Bill Shatner impression the whole time. Mm-hmm. He's doing the uh, Stargate, uh, heading to a planet. You know, this is that his weird cadence right. kind of thing. And also there's a, there's a reference to uh, the uh, old uh, dating show. Love Connection? No, the other one. It was kind of like Love Connection. Yeah, the, like the, yeah. So it, you'll see it. It, it had the... When they had the backdrop with the... Never mind. Well, he wakes up kind of terrified from this nightmare. And the next scene, the boys are in line for a movie. They drop a Doctor Who reference, which was like... I felt like about five, six years ago, maybe a little longer, Doctor Who kind of came back with right. a vengeance. But at 2002, I feel like it's a very dormant property. And to reference it, it really shows the depth of their nerditude. Definitely. And they're in line uh, with Josh. Mm-hmm. And uh, what they're what they're planning on doing is... Uh, they're going to buy one ticket to one movie, mm-hmm. all the four of them. Yep. And then they're going to go watch a bunch of movies. Just all like, horror ripoff movies. They said. Oh yeah, that that was their thing. It was they were all horror ripoff movies. Well, they try. They, that's the plan. They try to enact the plan, and then they get promptly kicked out of the theater by two big, uh, big bulky thugs that worked at the theater. Yeah, and uh, so then Bill's like, you know what? We, we, we you know we got kicked out. We got to make a day of this. We got to, you know, let's go have fun. Yeah. And so they go to like a fake Toys R Us. Darby Toys. Yeah. And uh, they play video games. Then they go to the Burger Moat. Oh, I missed the name of that. Yeah, the Burger Moat. Okay. And then they go to, um, they were standing outside the lingerie store. I don't remember what it was. It was a knockoff of Victoria's Secret, but they were standing in front of the windows, pressing their hard cocks against the glass. Um. And then they, they head to the local comic book shop. They're rounding out the day. They're going over, and it's a piece of shit place. Yeah, it's, it's like in a the, dump area. It's like a bad part of town. It's, yeah. it's, it's like a ghost town kind of looking, you know, and there's, yeah. like, there's like crows and vultures and stuff, and it's just all, all the color went, like, went colorful. It went all the gray, the grays and blacks. There's some annoying kid that comes out of the shop, and he's like looking through a pack of cards, hoping he gets the one he wants. He, he does, and then he runs out in the street. He gets ran over by a motorcycle. Don't they say, God, I wish you'd get hit by a car or yeah, something? And yeah. then he promptly does. Yeah. 
I'm trying to. Th- I and think then, his, his name was William. I and think. like he's laying on the street, bloodied. Yeah, and, and then, then the kids come over and like try to rob him. Yeah, they're, they're all looking through his cards. Yeah, and then uh, vultures come and start eating at his face. They think he's dead. This is uh, one of many examples of the heightened reality that I was talking about. Right. You know, there are some. Pl- have you ever seen Mission Hill? Hmm. Okay, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of cartoons that can kind of be set in reality. This is definitely not one of them. They're taking advantage of sure. being a cartoon. So inside the shop, um, they kind of pan over the shop itself, and there's a series of wildly uh, geeky conversations taking oh, place. Oh yeah, I just wrote a bunch of nerd references. Mm-hmm. Is what I wrote. Uh, then this one kid comes up to them, and it's I call him Spitty Kid. He just talks to the list, and they're just talking right into the face, and and they're just they're they're just. Getting, he's just getting spit all yeah, over these guys' yeah. face. Then uh, both Josh and Bill uh, see a brand new, still in the package, Bobo Fett action figure. And I was thinking to myself at first, I was thinking to myself, self, because that's how I refer to myself. How are they getting away with this? George Lucas would never let him, to, you know. So many references. But the reason why they could show it is Boba Fett has an antenna that goes up, right? Look at you. In real life. Well, you're a fucking nerd. No, my son likes Boba Fett. But in this pick, in this cartoon, the Boba Fett's antenna is facing down. So That's how they got away with it, you think? Yep, parody. I guess. Um, okay, so Bill and Josh both won it. Okay, oh, so. yeah, and they're go- they are losing their shit over this thing. Um. I, I, well, originally, we were talking about Eli going to be on the show, and, I'm, and and for this only for this reason, I'm glad he wasn't. Otherwise, I'd love to have the baggage boy here. Um, does the, the guy who owns the shop? Because the, both the boys are like, "Oh my god, I want this forever and a day." How much is this? And the shop owner has a crisis of conscience, and he has a, a devil pop up on his show. He's like, "Ooh, you could get like two hundred bucks from this." And the other, the, the angel pops up. Is he's, he's like, "Does, does see that guy say we could get?" 250 off of these fuckers? I don't I don't know. I, I think he said fuckers. I think so because I think Molly looked up and went like, "What?" I think that guy said fuckers. I, I think so too. <laughs> um and I I don't know. I, I think that I think he said 300 or something because I remember oh, the, Yeah, and he goes, "Yeah, so he goes like, uh, I want 300 for it." And both Bill and uh Bill William, whatever you want to call him, uh him and Josh like fight over who's going to buy this, right? And they're like they're wrestling around and stuff, and they're like, "Okay, the only way to solve this is to have a trivia off." And that was referenced in the Twitter se- uh, response section, where the guy was like, "Hey, favorite part of the show, the trivia off." Yeah, the, do you want to explain this trivia off thing? Because I mean, I I would have understood. I got maybe two of them. This is basically it's long. It is very, very long. long. The, these two boys um, are saying, we both want this. This is the only way to figure this out is to have a trivia off. So they face each other, and each one of them takes turns asking the other like kind of nerdy questions about s- fantasy, sci-fi, superheroes. And very rapid. Very Everything rapid. under the sun. And, and if the, and the first person to miss a question will lose – and the other boy will get the opportunity to purchase the Boba Fett doll. And uh, this garners so much attention that everyone in the store starts to gather around a crowd. You know, nothing, nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd, right? right. So um, these boys go back and forth what seems like forever. And there are, there are so many, like, again, so many actual references made. These aren't like, you know, Zip Zap from Zorb Lab did this and that. And right. it's like, no, no, no this, this is... These are real this, ones, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi. What was his real name? You know, like, stuff like that. Like, it was it was actual information that these guys were tossing around. Um, it goes on forever. And then they start to fight. And then the kids start chanting, chanting which I thought was your probably your favorite part. They're chanting ECW. Yeah, yeah. That's probably your favorite. I thought of you immediately. <clears throat> and they say, well, all right, one last question. And I remember what the question is, but um, the big, the big fat shit that Josh got, he loses. Yeah, he screws up. And he says something about hating Jewish people. So I guess he's a Jewish guy. I don't know. I don't know. They like I, you but, guys. No, he, he, he says something about uh, anti. Uh, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, anti, you're an anti-Semitist or something. I was like, I was like, whoa. Okay. Anyway, the fat kid's pissed off, and then both kids. He's <laughs> like, we don't have the money. It's like, yeah, do you right. have the money? It's like, no. So they both rush home. God. To get to get money to pay for this doll, they're and fighting and running down the street the entire and, way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, Bill goes in, and his sister is watching TV. He's like, mm-hmm. "Where's mom's checkbook? Where's mom's checkbook?" 
And she's like, I don't know. He goes looking for it, and it cuts back to her, and she has a voodoo doll of her brother that she's continually stabbing. No reference for that prior. Uh-huh. Very bizarre. Uh, yeah, and, then, and meanwhile, Josh takes his mom's pocketbook. Yeah, steal, steals her purse. And they both run down the street with these forms of payment, uh, and, and both of them trip and fall. Uh, they make – you kind of make the assumption that uh, um, Bill falls because of the, the voodoo doll stabbing, and then uh, Josh falls. Right, he's a big fat fucker. He, he runs into like a blind guy or something, right? right? Anyway. They, they, get, they, get back, they get back to yeah. uh, the comic book store and – and Bill's like, look, I got a check with your name on it. And he's like, what do you think this is? What do you, what do you say? What do you think this is? Uh, like, I don't remember. He's like, I, but, but basically he's saying, I don't take checks. And I don't take credit cards. And the fat guy's like, I got 35 credit cards. Like, I don't take those either. What kind of fucking store do you got? <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, what do you mean you don't take credit cards? That was kind of funny. So uh, they continue to fight over the toy. Uh, they grab it and, and actually fighting over the toy and they break it. And they're, after that, they are promptly kicked out. The guy says, you guys are going to pay for this. You're both right. going to pay for it. And I guess the both boys got a piece of the doll but didn't have to pay for it at that time. So why were they allowed to leave with the broken doll? <laughs> right. I guess because it's not worth anything anymore. And that's it. Yeah. That's the end. And the, the kid from earlier, the annoying kid who got hit by the car, he kind of pops up and says, oh, no, is this the end of the Elting? Like kind of saying, hey, check out the next episode. Right. There is no X episode. No. As a matter of fact, there's a boatload of turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. Evan Dorkin created this. He took a large role in the, in the pilot's creation and, and has since stated that if he could have redone the episode, he would have chosen to delegate more work and to choose an Eltingville story that would show off more of the series' potential and characters. So if if you're wondering, which is what the section is, why this didn't continue, the creator, the, those are his two cents. But sometimes the creator is too close and can't see the forest for the trees. Right. So what, what do you think was wrong? Well, I, I, I again, I... I I uh, agree with the sentiments from the the Twitter response about how this was before its time because nerd culture right now is huge, but back in two thousand two, maybe not as you know near as much. Yep. Um, I think that it would it would lose a lot of people that weren't into that nerd it, this episode at least it, it that would, trivia off. Yeah, it, I, I, get, I lost my fucking mind. I, I it hurt my head. Honestly. I bet it was two minutes, but it felt like forever because the the science fiction, the fantasy, the superhero, all those those references, those facts were were super fast and and, and heavy. It was right. boom, 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 boom. And it, I, I guess for me, I was like, why do you have to let it go this long? Like, I mean, we get it; these guys are nerds. We got that from the time they walked yep. into the dam where they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. But like, I, I know it's to build the intensity of it. But it it just seemed like it was a really long time. Yeah, I agree. Um, this felt like the cartoon version of the Big Bang Theory to me, is what it felt like. Um, I don't like the Big Bang Theory. I feel like it it makes those guys feel too nerdy. It, it's like it goes, it's over the top. I right. felt like these cartoon characters were over the top. Right. They yes, they're nerds. But they're human beings, right? They're not the. I don't know. It's just I felt like it, it was too much. They were really like nailing it. It was too like hard. nerds on crack. Wink. Wink. Nice. I hope that's a thing now. Um, I, if I were to improve it, I'd probably water it down a little bit. Um, knowing that this is a, a a comic book thing that this guy had created, yeah, maybe another story would have been more suitable um, when trying to flesh out these characters and try to here's an get, idea you get one shot right you get one shot at a pilot make it make it good well how, how about here's the scenario how about these four guys all right there's a brand new issue of whatever comic book out there mm-hmm. and they they go around they, they, the episode is them going around town trying to scrounge up the change to get this this comic book. doing little weird odd jobs selling things that they have or just interacting with weird people in the in the town Maybe blowing a, a hobo in the alley. Oh, I would love to see that guy blow up somebody in the. I mean, if if, if asked what would I do to improve it, that's what I would say, <laughs> right? A, a definite animated blowjob scene. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. I, I, I apologize. I know I've asked you this a million times. Um, IMDb score. What, what is IMDb? What does that stand for? Uh, the Illinois um, Mutant Babe. 
Yeah, I think that's it. I am. Oh, I forgot the D. But, uh, no, I think Illinois I think, mutant. I think this D is silent. Illinois mutant dick babes. Dick babes. Um, Illinois mutant dick babes has a website to where they rate things like this. What do you think the rating is for Welcome to Eltingville? Uh, Six point five. It's a seven point eight, and that's from hundred and fifty five ratings. Viewer reviews. Funny and smart comic geek tune show. Uh, this is from Tim Evanston from July 1st, 2002. So the same year that this was debuted. It says, although uh, only the premiere episode is aired as of June 2002 on Cartoon Network, Welcome to Eltingville is an extremely well-drawn animated series with sarcastic, penetrating, hot, uh, insight into the geek world of comics, fantasy, role-playing, and sci-fi movies. The series' three lead male characters each represent an aspect of this world and are perpetually hounded by a nerdy and even more geekier, younger, hence ignored, kid as well. The uh, dialogue comes fast and furious and is scathingly funny. Anyone into comic sci-fi fantasy uh, will find uh, enough jokes, inside jokes and self-references to fill several hours worth of research. More, more, more. And the theme song is to die for. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, God, this, this is very simple. Mm-hmm. This one, the re- it, was, it, was, it was, if you would have put this out in... 2013, eight, 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 eight or nine, 10, you think? 13, yeah, one. anywhere in there. Oh, they, it would have ate it up. It's a few years. It would have been, really. been the next Ren and Stimpy. Oh, boy, that's, that's well, I'm just, very just, I'm just trying to get you Here are. a lot of fire under your ass. Um, some of the other titles of these things are, has a lot of promise. Um, why was this show never picked up? Wow, Trey Cool. Uh, where are the Eltingville Science Fiction Fantasy and Role Playing Game Club? Uh, the overwhelming feeling behind this is like, we are the nerds, we're out here, and we're going to speak up. We enjoy this. Right. We liked it. Um, here's here's uh, another review here. It says, uh, this has to be one of the best animations for geeks I have ever witnessed. The trivia fight between club members in the comic book shop was one of the best written spots I have seen in an adult cartoon. Major kudos Go out to the writers for coming up with such good trivia late in the episode. And I agree, no Bubba Fett body, uh, then he's not dead. That's a uh, reference to the movie. They, yeah. Because they, yeah, so. they never saw the body, so they don't think. The body, the butter? The body, the butter. They never God, saw I miss him. Jeff. I miss him, too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11-11, and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort... Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. I tell you what, Bill and Josh show up to that comic book shop. They see that Boba Fett. I, I guarantee they think in their mind that's a number seven. That's the best you're gonna get. One to seven. That's our scale, right? Right. No other scale makes more sense than that. One to ten. That's that's crazy. The, have you heard of the Skullville scale? Uh. Uh-uh. That's a scale to determine how hot things are, right? Hot like wasabi when I bust rhymes. Exactly. I'm like Leanne rhymes because yes. I'm all about values. Everything we have to have a way of measuring things. Us human beings, we have a certain way of thinking. We need to have measurements to uh, to define, calculate, to define and categorize things. Nothing is more certain than the one through seven <clears throat> scale set forth by the television show from the 19 ad 90s called Wings. We take the seven characters from that show. The worst you can get, it's a Roy Biggins all the way up to number seven. It's a Brian Hackett. So Captain Philip Rustasher, I turn to you. How do you rate Welcome to Eltingville? Well, I'm going to give you Eli's rating first. Oh, the, the, the baggage boy? The baggage boy, Eli. He did watch this with me. Um, I, as, I, I, as I was watching him watch it, I could tell that he was kind of getting lost at times because it was going too fast for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think the trivia thing, like he, 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 words that he knew popped up during this trivia thing, but I think it was going for too fast for him to, but he gave it a five. Five. <clears throat> I said, "What did you, I said? What turbulence was there? What what things did you not like?" He said, "I don't. I didn't like how the 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 voices and their mouths were different sometimes." Oh, I didn't notice that. Okay, hmm. I think it was a it was a volume thing. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. Um, for me, you guys know that nerd nerd culture just it makes no sense to me. I don't understand it. Um, I really just think that this wasn't this wasn't too bad. Um, except that trivia was so long, but I commend him. I liked the I liked the art of it. I liked the mm-hmm. art. Yeah, it was uh, 
Heavy black line, heavy, heavy line, heavy lines. All the outlining, yes, I noticed <laughs> that immediately. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four. I, I mean, there was, I didn't, I didn't hate it. Yeah, you gave it a four last time. You gave it a four this time. I gave it a five last time. I give it a four this time. Hey. I agree with you. Uh, I like the art of this. It, it, it wasn't very, it wasn't too lazy. It wasn't great, but this was ahead of its time. There, there are many more stories to tell of these four oh, young yeah, nerds. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we didn't even, they didn't even go to school. Oh, like, yeah. Like, that's a whole untapped resource. Yeah, because of, the, jo- of the jocks and, you know, AV club kind of stuff. Summer jobs, you know. The, Summer the, jobs had me a blast. Me a blast. Summer jobs paid my taxes. Paid my taxes. I think there's a lot of potential in this. I think the pilot was executed poorly. The story was not great. Um, there was so much time on this trivia thing. Some, several people said this is the best part of the show. No. I say it, it's it, the part of the show that dealt out the most references, but that does not make it a great yeah, part that, of the show. There was one that said it was such great writing. It, it's just trivia question after trivia question. You're not writing anything. Yeah. Um, I, I think it... It was fun for nerds. Nerds loved it. They got a boner off of it. They shot their wad by the end of it. Good voice acting. Good animation. I think it was a poor story. I think if this guy had made several comics or maybe a ton of for Eltingville, there's probably another one that he could have chosen that would have adapted better to a pilot. Right. So I give it a four right down the middle. You give it a four right down the middle. And with that, we close the book on Welcome to Eltingville, and we will never mention that show again. Ever. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of Space Kataz. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. Space Kataz is a spinoff of Aqua Teen Hunger Force centered around the ongoing feud between the Moonanites and the Plutonians. You can find the entire episode of Space Kataz by subscribing to Couch Pilots and Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app of choice. And then simply click on one of our classically books in the show notes. Or go to adultswim.com and sign up for the alt-right. All right. Mm-hmm. I think that's what you had said that once, and I had just like I think that's. I think it's cute that you're 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 for my some of my jokes because I, I it's it's nice of you. Um. Well, I mean, if you want to watch this, you'll have to sign up for the alt right. <laughs> that's fine. Am I right? I know. <laughs> Correct. Oh boy, um, couchpilotspodcast dot com. That's a tiny corner of the internet that we have kind of carved out. There you can listen to all of our shows for free. You can you can just go to a, a little icon and click, ooh, Twitter, ooh, Instagram, ooh, Facebook, and it'll take you right there. Right, yeah. It's a great resource. Some might say a one-stop shop. You can search by – you can search, like, episodes just by a word. Yeah. Like, you know. Keywords in an episode. Like it'll pain. Bring, yeah, pain. Boom. Constant pain. Boom. Yep. Babysitting. Uh, Avengers and babysitting. Boom. Right. You know, clerks. Boom. Uh, the only word in the title, clerks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's super easy. Uh, we also have patreon.com slash couch pilots. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where we have four or five tiers. You can donate. Uh, each tier has uh, is, a, is an upgrade in your seat. And, uh, and if you go for the highest tier, I'll come to your house and have sex with you. Yeah. It's, it's a, worth it. It's a great tier. It, my wife said it was, it was well worth the money. She said it brought a tear to her eye. Uh, 910 Pilots 1, it's 910-745-6871. The hotline is open at all times. Um, it gets very congested at more times than others, so I would say call about 3, 3.30 in the morning. That's the best time to call that number and leave a message. Um, tell us what you think about the show. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us about the first set pair of shoes you remember purchasing yourself. That's a monumental occasion. Hey, we're in the middle of uh, the uh, cartoon extravaganza. Let us know your favorite cartoons as a kid. Here's here's the thing. I will tell you this. I have plenty of cartoons to round out this season. I haven't necessarily picked the ones yet that we're going to do, but they're there. If you have a cartoon that you would like us to watch that you know had only one episode, let us know. I, um, we already did. Uh, we've already done a couple. We did the Mini Monsters. Mm-hmm. We did Kogarth of Barbaria. We did Pride of the X Men. And uh, there's probably a couple others that I'm missing, but right. they're out there. And if you know of one we haven't done. Then let us know. We'll do it this yeah. season. We'll do it. We'll do it. Our our listeners come first. Yep. And then I but I always come last. I tell you. No, you come second. Ah. I come last. Captain Philip, rest assured. <laughs> uh, is there anything you'd like to say to our fans? Perhaps a message of po- uh, positivity for them to take with them this week. Um, you know what? Watch a cartoon. 
Go mm. back, you know, go back and, and find a cartoon that you yes. liked as a kid. Just yes. just take a few, just take thirty minutes out of your day. Go back to your childhood, laugh, enjoy, um, and just 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 frolic in the animation and jokes. Yeah, relive that experience. Right, right, absolutely. I I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, this pilot, it may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots, folks. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Gotta go. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day.